Hey guys, this is Drew with Cooch Collectibles. Welcome back to a brand new video. In this video, we're gonna be talking about the one thing that new coin dealers get wrong. How will this help you as someone that's wanting to become a coin dealer? We're gonna jump into that in this video. We hope you enjoy. Over the past few weeks, we've been up north, going to coin shows, coin shops, dealing with people that we usually deal with on a weekly, monthly, and quarterly basis, but we get to see them in person this time. And I think as a more experienced group of coin dealers, going into every transaction, you have to think about a few things. And I think this kind of escapes newer coin dealers. We go into it thinking about the person, the relationship, how they're doing, not from a exploitation perspective, just we care about human beings because we're human as well. The second thing that we think about is overhead, right? So if we're meeting somebody at a show and the table fee is $150, we are concerned about that and we know about that. Same thing for a shop. If overhead at a shop is $1,200 to $5,000 a month, we need to know about that and we're concerned about that. That's important to us. And then the third thing is making money. We travel a long way to hopefully make money in the process to move the business forward. But in that order, that's our order of importance. Who they are and the relationship, their expenses, and them being able to make a profit, and then us making a profit. So I'm going to give you two examples of different scenarios where we didn't make any money, but we emphasized relationship and them hopefully making a profit so they could pay for their expenses. So the first example I'd like to talk to you about is the three 10-ounce vintage Silvertown bars that we bought. We were at a show and we were dealing with a dealer that has really helped us out the past six months up in Ohio. He's been looking out for us. He's been sending us photos of different inventory. Just an all-around all great guy. And going into this deal, we were looking at his coins and the various things that he had to offer. And we saw these Silvertown bars and we thought, okay, we're going to buy them. We didn't know if we were going to make any money on them. We probably won't. And we don't know if we're going to lose money on them. But again, going back to our hierarchy of importance, he is a connection that we care about. We care about him and his success. And we also were taking into consideration that he had a table fee. He has overhead just like we do, and we need to help him as much as we can. We may break even, we may lose money, but in the end, we are building a network that you can't put a price tag on. The second example is in a shop. We went to a shop on our way down to Houston and we ended up picking up a 1926 quarter eagle graded MS64 by PCGS. We knew right off the bat that we would make little to no money on this purchase. But thinking of the three major things that we've talked about throughout this whole video is he's a human, he's important to us, he's a part of our network, we're gaining ground. The next item is he has a shop, like I mentioned. I don't know how much his rent is, it could be $3,000 a month. He has to pay that rent. I'm thinking about him succeeding if I do not end up paying for something like that and he can't pay his rent. He won't have a shop anymore. I won't be able to draw on him as a connection. Third, we may not make any money. We may lose money on it. But again, we're taking ground. We're thinking about the long term and we may not win in these transactions, if you will, but down the line, we may hit a home run. And I think that's the most important thing. If you're a new coin dealer and you're thinking about the dollar value solely, it's a bit foolish because you can't boil everything down to a dollar. And I think that that mistake will separate you from becoming a more sophisticated and mature coin dealer down the line. Today we got some mail from CAC grading and CAC stickering. A few weeks ago we ended up making a video about what we were sending off and what we were crossing over. We are going to show all of our results on Wednesday at 5 o'clock. We hope to see you there. Now let's move on to some coins that we purchased at the Broadview Heights Coin Show in Ohio while we were up there. Alright guys, so the first thing I want to show you are these Silvertown bars like Casey was talking about. Just pretty unique, cool things. Not going to make a whole bunch of money on them, but it does add a variety for you guys if you want to check them out on our online coin shop. The next thing I want to show you is this Quarter Eagle that Casey was also mentioning. This is a 1926 Quarter Eagle graded Men's State 64, CC approved. These are extremely tough in gem. 
Gem really needs a, a strong strike. You know, anything uh, below Gem, 64 and below, those just don't have a super strong strike. As you can see a little bit from the face here and the cheek, the cheek has a little bit of kind of a softness to it. I think most gold pieces have that issue. It's just because it was that high point that uh, wasn't fully struck. And so when you're seeing a, a gem gold piece, the value is going to be extremely high. But 64 CAC is as close as you're going to get to it. And uh, it's going to be a lot more affordable. The next thing I want to show you is this 1938S Arkansas Commemorative Half Grade Men's State 64. It's in a nice 2.2 uh, gen, I believe, holder. And uh, a little bit of a tougher date to find. The next one I want to show you is this 1951 Franklin Half Dollar. It's got some nice color to the coin. And, uh, you know, a little bit of a lower grade, but it's something that someone could add to their Franklin set if they're looking for some toned coins. And most of the time we're not trying to put a bunch of money into toners, but, you know, making five, ten bucks on something like that's always pretty cool. So we run into a few 28 piece dollars this week. My favorite of the bunch is this OGH 28. It's great, mid state 62. The luster's phenomenal. It's got a little bit of a darker toning to the reverse on the eagle, but definitely a nice flashy coin. Next 28 I want to show you is this one in the PCGS holder. It uh, It's a little bit of a more modern one that's been graded recently. A little hazy, but that's okay. It's got a cool true view to it also. And uh, sometimes when you're at shows and you run into a few 28 piece dollars, or if you run into some mercury dimes that are a good price, you just got to buy them. I know it seems like it's overloading a little bit to see two 28 piece dollars in one video, but if they're the right price, you definitely should try to buy them because there's always customers looking for great stuff like that. We have this 1924 Huguenot, State 65 OGH. It's got a little bit of a darker toning on the hat, but I mean, the, the surfaces are really nice and strong and flashy as well. I felt like selling this one to CAC, but not too sure about it yet, and wanted to throw it up for you guys if you were interested. Next one I want to show you is this 1938D Buffalo Nickel. It's in a Rattler holder, graded Men's State 65. Don't think this one would sticker. It's got a little bit of haze on the coin, but that's okay. Here's an interesting one. This is a 1924D Mercury Dime. It's graded XF40 in an Annex holder. It's got some really interesting toning to it. It was probably in an album for a little bit and it uh, got a little retone and so definitely pretty cool. Then we have this 1936S Bay Bridge Commemorative Half. It's got a little rim tone to the coin and the surfaces are really nice. Not too many issues there. Um, it is gem and it is a kind of highly sought after commem. People love that design. The next one I want to show you is this 1944S Mercury Dime. Great Mint State 64. This coin has PVC on it, which is unfortunate, but it's good to disclose that. People are still looking for Rattlers that are pretty affordable, and this one is as cheap as you can get it. The next one is this 1938 Oregon Commemorative Half. It's Great Mint State 65. It's in an OGH holder. It's got some nice luster to the coin. I think this coin would upgrade, but it has a little haze to it. If it was conservative, it'd probably go to a 66 or a little bit higher, but just selling it as is. The next coin is this 1942 Walking Liberty Half, Great Mint State 65. Casey ended up picking this one up, and it's just a nice flashy gem. It's got a little hit right on the skirt that probably holds it from a 66, but still super nice. Here is a 1913D Type 1 Buffalo Nickel, Great Mint State 64. Really nice surfaces, no hits at all, but the only thing that holds this coin back from it going any higher is the strike. If you can see by five cents, it's just so mushy and soft. That's the one unfortunate thing about this coin, but priced a gray sheet of 150, so not too bad. The next coin I want to show you is this 1887 Morgan dollar in OGH. Why am I showing you this coin? Because of the reverse. The reverse is this really nice Colorful blue and green. Definitely tougher to find in an older holder, and so wanted to offer this to you guys. Here is another Arkansas commemorative half. A little bit nicer looking than the other ones. The 35D. It's in a Rattler holder. 
and pretty nice and strong surfaces. Had a little haze on the on the back of the holder here just because it was, you know, not really housed in the best and most proper way. We try to put everything in a bag nowadays just because we know holders are very important to people. Then we have this 1908S Indian. It's the it's right behind 1909S for people in terms of what they like to collect. There's also also the 1877 Indian, but this one's an affordable, better date XF40, and it's also CAC approved. Haven't seen CAC approved one sell for a good while now, and so wanted to try this one and pick it up for you guys. Then we have this 1946S Walker. It's a great Mint State 64. Another nice Rattler holder. Seems like we're getting a little bit vintage with the holders today, so I hope you enjoyed that part. I'd like to show you guys one more coin in this video. This is the 1897 Morgan Dollar Grade Mint State 63 Proof Like. Has a few distracting spots, but I like the coin, and it's tougher to find in PL, especially for a 97S. But thank you guys for taking a look at all these new purchases. We hope you enjoyed today's video. The coins that we showed and the wisdom that we shared um, just as people that are trying to make it ourselves, it's something that we have to keep in our mind, in the back of our mind, every time that we go into a coin deal. Um, I think that in any type of business, this piece of wisdom is very helpful. So leave a comment if this helped you, and uh, hit the like button. We're going to try making more content like this in the future. Thanks again, and have a great week.